um, welcome to all or none law channel um, uh, recently I'm changing my uh, USMLE point uh, to USMLE team okay um, today onwards I will say welcome to USMLE team rather than USMLE point so uh, sorry for the inconvenience uh, let me start with this very important topic for a uh, step to CK and a step 3 and a step 1 2 the topic is uh, primary hyperparathyroidism very important topic just spend your nearly 5 minutes or 6 minutes with me definitely you will come to know more important points which are very important for your USMLE examination let me start with this ok before knowing the what is primary hyperparathyroidism uh, let uh, let me know what uh, let me tell you what is the action of PTH if you know the axis then definitely it will help you to know the primary hyperparathyroidism secondary and tertiary to tell you secondary and the tertiary hyperparathyroidism I will be discussing in another video shortly but I will be spending more time in this video I will be spending more time in explaining the primary hyperparathyroidism okay now let's start understanding the axis remember the two things what you need to remember is about the PTH it increases the blood calcium level that's it and other thing what you need to remember is it decreases the blood phosphate level two things remember okay now the pituitary secretes the PTH right so it comes and acts on a different organs so I'll be discussing shortly on a kidney it absorbs reabsorption of the calcium and prevents calcium excretion so what happens the blood calcium level increases right intestine it goes and acts on the intestinal cells to cause absorption of the calcium so the calcium blood level increases bone what it causes it causes a reabsorption of the calcium so what happens the bone goes weaker but the blood calcium level increases ultimately raises the calcium and the, and lowers the phosphate whereas the vitamin b uh, vitamin d increases of both um, what you call uh, vitamin d increases both uh, calcium and the phosphate okay whereas the pth increases only calcium but decreases the phosphate okay pth how it helps in the reduction of the phosphate is uh, PTH reduces the reabsorption of the phosphate from the proximal tubule of the kidney okay so more phosphate is excreted that's why the PTH level is low when there is a high P uh, PTH levels low phosphate when there is a high PTH so what happens in a primary hyperparathyroidism there is an increase in the PTH so when there is an increase in the PTH uh, the calcium level will be very high above the normal range and the phosphate will be below the normal range right let's move on to next slide primary hyperparathyroidism defect in the parathyroid gland remember there is defect in the parathyroid gland hyperparathyroidism you know increase in the pth primary is a defect in the parathyroid gland secondary other than the parathyroid right so primary hyperparathyroidism defect in the parathyroid gland so there is a most common cause is a parathyroid adenoma single adenoma is the most common so PTH level increases more calcium absorption ultimately the blood calcium level rises and potassium and uh, phosphorus level decreases causes for the primary hyperparathyroidism remember the most important thing is a single adenoma other things like a parathyroid carcinoma the difference between the parathyroid carcinoma and the thyroid carcinoma thyroid carcinoma are not hyper functioning mm -hmm. whereas hyperparathyroidism parathyroid carcinoma are hyper functioning can be so it can be seen in a men 1 or men 2a remember this one and this is a syndrome and you can remember if you want and a familial isolated hyperparathyroidism important topic okay so bones stones abdominal groans and a psychic moans so what happens in the bones zero gout chondrocalcinosis very important renal manifestation like polyuria kidney stones hypercalciuria and rarely hypro uh, nephrocalcinosis okay Okay. Gastrointestinal manifestations include anorexia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, constipation, peptical disease, acute pancreatitis. Proximal myopathy, weakness, easy fatigability, depression, inability to concentrate, and memory problems. 
hypertension, bradycardia, shortened QT interval, very important. Because usually we don't think of shortened QT interval in uh, primary hyperparathyroidism, right? So we have to think because of hyperkalasemia, right? Hyperkalasemia, you see shortened QT interval. That's very important point. Okay, test what you need to do. Calcium and the PTH. Which one is the first? It's a PTH, remember. First PTH, then calcium. Very important. 24 hours urine calcium measurement is necessary to rule out FHH. Okay. Imaging studies are not used to make the diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism. Usually, they don't use the imaging studies for a diagnosis of this disease. Dual energy radiographic absorbometry is a useful tool to demonstrate the skeletal involvement in a primary hyperparathyroidism. Remember, sometimes they ask you about the skeletal involvement. Which of the following is, is the best test for this? So, dual energy radiography absorbometry. This is very important. Pathognomic changes such as salt and pepper granulation, degranulation in the skull and subperiosteal bone resorption in the phalanges. Very important. Remember, this is a pathognomic sign. So, you need to know maybe in a step one. I think they will ask about this. Step two, they can ask also. Treatment. How do you treat it? Before, let me tell you, there is an indication. There is a criteria for a surgery. If you if, if you want to remove the single adenoma from the patient so you, you need to follow this criteria um, one milligram above the normal limit of the reference range of serum calcium like 10.5 is on 10.5 is a normal right so 11.5 or 12 is going to be indication 24 hour urine calcium excretion greater than 400 milligram very important a 30 percent reduction in the creatinine clearance very very important bone mineral density t score below sorry minus 2.5 at any site this is very important uh, age younger than 50 years so 50 years younger the patient is a better for better candidate for surgery okay okay guys i'm done with this uh, thank you so much for watching my video please do subscribe and uh, please comment and uh, like mm, please let me know if you have any questions so that i can help you with Thank you so much for watching my video. See you with another video with um, secondary and tertiary um, hyperparathyroidism. Thank you. Thank you.